and we are Cassandra. We come to this day in love and enlightened in truth. Is this acceptable to you? Yes. Good. We asked to do this communication for a reason. We did one a few weeks ago that was primarily about the negativity that the planet is in and the, could we say, um, obstructions, the things that will come over the next 18 months. So we wanted everyone to be prepared for that. We didn't do it to create fear. We did it to create preparedness. Mm. Because if you're prepared, then there's no need to fear. So that was the reason. And although some that listened to it only heard the the darkness, they didn't hear the light. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do a... Uh, communication about the good news that's coming the good things that are coming so that those that are so fearful of the darkness will have something to anchor to because darkness only exists when you give it energy and it's been given a lot of energy everywhere you look it's fear of this be careful of that warning about this warning about that now, in order for the planet to go through the changes and, could we say, remove those that represent the darkness, that's corruption, uh, human trafficking, all of these things, in order for this to go, well, you're going to have to see it. You, you, you can't just ignore it. And hope to God that it goes away when you don't really know what it is. So that's why we spoke about those things. But now we'd like to speak about the good news of what is positively happening for many that will listen to this communication. Um, Often we do these groups and within the groups we talk about things that we don't talk about so publicly. And that is because those that are within the groups are um, used to our language, are strongly prepared, uh, do not go into panic, etc. So we, we would often tell them and, and of course they are prepared to do the work. There are many that want the abilities, that desire the gifts, but they're not prepared to do the work. And for those that come to these groups, they are prepared. So, of course, we give them information that we would not give to the, uh, could we say, generally, right? So, and this is uh, not that we hold back on general information. It's just that some things we feel are important for them to know because they work in different fields. They're working on uh, ley lines on the planet, collective consciousness on the planet. They're healers. They're working with others to create awareness. So, of course, the information is unique to them. Uh, at this moment, there are many of, of you that are listening to this and will listen to this. And will listen to it either through listening to this or listening to someone who is repeating it, which happens quite a lot. Um, we've spoken about this many times. We bring through some information and then other people start to bring through the same information. It's not that uh, necessarily that they are... Um, in some cases, plagiarizing, it's more that that consciousness is coming onto the planet at the same time in different areas of the planet for different groups. So the message gets broadly known. There's a difference between that those that are connected to spirit and integrally giving the information and those that actually plagiarize. And, and, and those that plagiarize will we'll very soon, over the next 18 months, find themselves without an audience. Because people are starting to become more aware of what the truth is. 
and what frequency is. And for some of you who've been at this a long time, you'll remember the days in the 80s and the 90s when you felt excited about manifesting, you felt excited about what you could create, excited about the possibilities. And a lot of that excitement vanished because you then went into the journey of, could we say, the shadow and having to come up against the shadow in others in order to hold your truth. So you became conspiracy theorists, woo-woos and all of this. So what we can say is that that joy of manifesting, that, that light of positivity is going to have a renaissance. So for those of you that are prepared, life is going to get pretty good. And the part of the reason is because you've already learned that if you operate from your mind all the time, it's no longer functioning for you. It's not working. You're coming up against a wall. But those that are operating from their feeling center, from their heart, from their truth and not their ego, are finding that the world is opening for them. And that actually pertains to a lot of individuals who may have seemed meek and mild, who may have seemed quietly in the background, who weren't as forceful, who were not competitive, who were not willing to, you know, get on the marketing bandwagon and sell their wares in a way that wasn't, could we say, honourable by manipulating others with fear, manipulating others with suggestions of heightened gifts so that you can be more important or more, emp more empowered than others. Um, so those that have been in the background will find themselves moving into the forefront. And that's because the ego will no longer be listened to. The ego in mankind is starting to evaporate. It's starting to collapse. Now, of course, there is such a thing as a healthy ego, which is to have a healthy response to your own self-worth. To say, well, no, I won't be spoken to like that. Or no, I, I, I don't feel I want to go down that journey with you. That you could call a healthy ego, but really what it comes down to is a healthy self-worth. So one could say that the ego is moving into the frequency of self-worth more than anything. So that's one good thing that's happening. Ego is melting away. Self-worth is having an elevation. And self-worth, when it comes from acceptance of who you are. So there is a very big movement in many of the souls on the planet to start honoring who they are and it's, it's not the false part of them that they've been told oh you were Cleopatra oh you were this you were that no it's honoring who you are in this lifetime your unique ability honoring who you who you are in your truth in that you understand your words have meaning they have power and you're choosing your words with love so when you when you see a situation that has people behaving badly or silly or stupidly rather than get upset about it think to yourself what would love do now what would the word of love do now love is a vibration it's not a concept it's a vibration and so asking yourself, when you start to feel agitated, when you start to feel nervous or anxiety about something, ask yourself, what would love do now? Love for that person or love for oneself? What would be the loving thing for me to do for myself? Or if you see someone who's in complete fear, what would be the loving thing to do for them? Because often... You have these individuals that are experiencing, they're very sensitive, they experience anxiety, they experience depression for a myriad of reasons. 
and little patience for them with the people around them. You know, oh, just get over it. Stop feeling like that. Push yourself a little harder. Just get over it. Well, what would love do in that circumstance? Love would possibly listen to that person's pain and acknowledge it as valid. And when you do that, when you acknowledge a person's pain as valid and that person feels heard, sometimes a great deal of that pain will just leave. So looking at the vibration of what would love do now will be very important over the next 18 months, two years. Two, your ability to manifest the world in which you wish to live in. And as we've spoken about before, it's as if, and many have spoken about this, it's as if the world will split into two worlds. New Earth, Old Earth, that has to do with mind frame and vibration. So if your mind is full of fear and you're in a panic and you hate everyone, then of course you're going to be in Earth number one, which is not a nice place to be. But if your mind is more clear, it doesn't mean you have to be consistently uh, you know, positive and loving and kind. You can have your off days. Of course, everyone does. But if most of your mind is in a positive place and your heart is in the place of love, then your world will become magical. And that's what we started with. Your world will become magical. Your ability to manifest will become magical. Because what you felt in the 80s and 90s was the grounding of 4D. And using that new energy was exciting. It was magical. It was joyful. It, it, it had power in it. And, and, and a lot of enthusiasm. And the same will happen with 5D. Same's already happening with 5D. Only... You're not using energy in the same way because 4D is energetic, it's psychic, it's understanding energy exists. And for many who were more akin to that teaching, to that understanding, that was an exciting place to be. Now, for those who are more akin to the softness, to compassion and understanding and not going into uh, competitiveness, comparing, judging, etc. For those that were meek and mild, for those that just wanted everyone to be happy around them, for those that really wanted to do good in the world but got left behind, that got taken advantage of, for you, life is going to get quite, quite better. Because you are the true vibration of unity consciousness. And you've been waiting quite a while. And, and your soul has been waiting quite a while. And so some of you went through a period of being really exhausted not so long ago. You're really tired. Some of you struggled with physical problems. Because as you were moving from one dimensional reality to another, you had to let go of some karmic things, whether it was family, whether it was past life, whether it was for the planet itself. There are many reasons why you would get ill. It's not just because you've got bad karma and you were thinking wrong and you were doing something wrong. Sometimes it's because you're letting go of something for the whole world. So... That's why it's, it's important to ask yourself, one, what would love do now, but also not to be judgmental. Because judging another person's illness and their inability to get over it is, is actually contributing possibly to the illness. Because maybe that person is actually releasing a collective and not necessarily something that they have created themselves. So... Understanding all of that, you get, you get to the point where you say, right, if I stay in my heart and I honour those feelings, what a wonderful thing is going to happen on the planet because now I am in alignment with my soul and my personality because more of my soul can be present due to the 5D uh, frequencies being grounded into Mother Earth. Now, of course, there are many forces that don't wish them to be grounded. And uh, 
that has caused some difficulties and will continue to cause resistance. However, there is more of an opportunity to align with unity consciousness than there has been at any other time. And that alignment will create magical moments, miraculous events for all of you when you are coming from your truth and your heart. And that is going to be extremely valuable because people who were manifesting from their mind or from their energy practices will no longer find that it's working so well for them because most of them want to go into 5D anyway. So they're going to have to find a way of letting go of their ego, move into self-worth and operate from there. So not operating from dominance and controlling the fields of expertise, but understanding that you are all co-creating. And what we said and we've been saying for years, an event will happen that the whole world will have to come together. So it doesn't have to be a cathartic event as in a massive tidal wave that wipes out pretty much everyone. It's not about that. It's about understanding that the energies that are coming will either send you insane or into peace. And in order to go into peace, you have to. You have to help each other. You need to share knowledge, to have compassion, to be willing to listen. to have some patience, to go deeper in your understanding. Because what will happen is those that are moving into 5D more strongly will trigger those around them into it. And sometimes when you trigger the people around you, all of the shadow has to come out. So it's important to have patience, to ask what would love do, you know, your teenagers often behave irrationally due to hormones and outside influences. And parents find that if they hold the love, they hold the space and the knowing that the child is good, that they've given it enough knowledge and enough grounding that it will come out of it, well, eventually it does come out of it, of that sticky place that it's in. So it's the same with everyone. It's like going from a teenager to an adult spiritually and letting go of that paradigm of power that has held them in a position of authority is not so easy. So you'll find that more and more will be willing to share their knowledge, will be willing to help each other, will be willing to share the stage in a lot of ways. And more and more groups will start to come together of fellow healers, educators, inspirational individuals will start to come together um, in, in, in a way that's harmonic. And this will help the whole planet. And what's going to happen is that Okay, so, so what's happening is the planet is becoming a member of the universe once again. And we spoke about this in previous uh, conversations. You, you, you are awakening to the fact that you are one with the universe. And with that comes a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise, and a lot of energy. And... The vibrational waves that are hitting the earth are supporting your own awakening. And so what it's also going to support is new technology for healing, for communication, for uh, interfacing with each other. All of these new technologies will come to bring zero... Well, actually, zero point energy has already existed, etc. But... Um, Let's say that it existed at a basic level and 
There will be no stopping it, even though, yes, there are big businesses that want to stop it. And they want to stop it through many means. They won't be able to stop it because as the mass consciousness reaches a tipping point in awareness, that awareness will ensure that these zero point energy uh, products will come out, will be present physically. So the reason that part of that is happening is because, as we said, your awareness is awakening. Uh, our daughter is doing this, you know, daily meditation and uh, facilitating the connection of unity consciousness within the body, mind and soul, an awakening of universal energies with collective energies on planet Earth, a grounding of this. So what she is doing with together as a collective actually is attuning those that are within this group to the new frequencies and creating a doorway that makes it possible for others to hook into those frequencies and bring down the goods. In other words, the um, scientific knowledge, the practical knowledge, the ideas and concepts of education through love and kindness and sharing. It, it, it's all there. It's all right. the blueprint is being created, and it's getting stronger and stronger. And as that blueprint gets stronger, the chaos will get stronger because those two worlds are actually separating. So for those that are willing to stay in their heart, to let go of competition and authority and everything like that. You'll find yourselves in a magical place, a place of wonder, where you'll not only be connecting with yourself and, of course, the beauty of Mother Earth, the plants, the animals, the ground, the, the elements, everything that is beautiful about Earth will suddenly come alive to you. It already is. When you look out into, let's say, a forest, the colours are more vibrant. Everything feels alive. Some of you are communicating with the life force of a forest, with plants, with animals, communicating with the elements, feeling them on a very deep level. It's magical. You know, um, unity consciousness is about becoming one with everything around you. And in order to, that, to do that, you become one with yourself. That's what those meditations are about. And the more that there are individuals on the planet as a group that are becoming one with themselves, the more that will kickstart everyone else. Because collective consciousness influences everything. And that's why you will see people's, um, could we say, fears, dramas, everything coming out in the street because their shadow has to be emptied. And it's unfortunate that there are those that would utilize that emptying of the shadow for their own means to, to bring in new laws, etc. Well, that's not going to work because planet Earth is now completely well, it always was under universal laws, but now it is, um, could we say, a mainstream of universal laws is coming through. So the man-made laws are no longer serving you, and many of you are figuring, figuring that out. So they will crumble, and new ways of government will come into existence and those new ways of government will be steered by your brothers and sisters of the universe. Now that doesn't mean 
that they will take over planet Earth and you'll get invaded. It doesn't mean anything like that. We've said your governments are communicating with alien beings for many, many years. And they're taking technology from them and they've used it to abuse, to cripple other countries. Like, if you look at these poor countries on the planet, they've been abused. Anyway, we're not going to go into what they represent right now, but what we can say is this, that there has always been positive beings working with the government. The government just has refused to listen. However, governments will start to because things are getting out of control and they're realizing that their own positions, you see it's greed a little bit, self-preservation, that their own positions are threatened. So governments will start aligning with your brothers and sisters in the universe that... Um, have your best interest at heart, which has nothing to do with taking over planet Earth and everything to do with assisting the humans on Earth and planet Earth in not only surviving but thriving in a way with new technologies, new knowledge and new fields of energy. And this will be glorious, but it, you know, that's going to take a few more years. Um, so that, that your ability, some of you are finding that you don't, you're not really thinking about what you want to manifest because you don't really feel a desire to manifest. And then you think there's something wrong with you because you don't have this burning desire to run out and change the world anymore. Well, it's not that there's something wrong with you. It's that there's something right with you. It's because you have already popped into 5D and you're no longer willing to go into this competitive nature and you're understanding that being in the present moment creates more change than creating goals in the future and striving and pushing and using your will to reach them. There's nothing wrong with creating goals. What you're using to reach them is entirely up to you. Uh, However, some utilize unethical means to reach them. You know, reach it at all costs. doesn't matter what's happening with my children or my partner or my friends around me or my family. It's, you know, I have to do this. So what is happening is that you're finding you don't have that push anymore because you're not you're not motivated by something that isn't in the present moment so this is how it works okay when you think about in in 4d in 3d when you think about something you want to bring into your life you send out a line of energy and you anchor to that time in the future and you move yourself towards it by making steps or taking steps. And sometimes those steps are hindered by others that you communicate with that tell you, oh, you can't do it, it's not possible, that's going to be difficult. Or they deliberately uh, interfere with what you're doing, sabotage you. And so then you've got a big map truck that you have to get over on your road. To re-establish your light, sometimes you sabotage yourself with your own belief systems. When you manifest from 5D, you're not thinking about the future, you're thinking about the present moment. Because you're in the present moment. So in other words, and you're manifesting from your heart space, not necessarily your mind. Your mind is in service to your heart. So it operates your body and the physical world, but your heart is the inspiration and that's the reigning factor that you follow. So you don't follow your ego, you don't follow your pain and agony, your, your saboteur, you follow your heart. 
And when you follow your heart and you're in your heart and you think, wow, you know, it would be really nice if, let, let's just take the education system, for instance. You might think to yourself one day, you might say you've got young children, you pop up to the school and you see, well, this doesn't feel very nice and these children are getting a lot of homework and they're learning a lot of stuff that it's not really practical and um, I'm not sure that I like this system. It's stressing my children out. So you might stop and think, wow, what would, what would, what would I like it to be like? And you may for a moment think about what that would be like, not in the future, but at this moment. What would it feel like if you and your child walked into the school and it felt calm? And children were joyous. They were happy to see each other. They didn't have, you know, stress on their face, fear in their eyes, agitation in their body. But they were relaxed, joyful, laughing, giggling, wanting to learn, enthusiastic. Everything feels open. It feels kind. And what the children are learning is not just the ABCs and mathematics, etc. But they're also learning how to communicate and how to be loving human beings. How to connect. How to use their heart and their mind in harmony. And they're not just learning about the history of war. They're learning about the history of creation and the universe. How wonderful those children would be completely in their joy. And you, as a parent, would feel absolutely wonderful to hand your child over every day without stress, knowing that it's in a loving, kind environment that's opening its heart and its mind. So that would be very nice. So you might start, start thinking about that. Might let that rest in your heart and vibrate that out in the present moment. And then you might sit and think about that over the, pre the couple of weeks in the present moment, not something in the future. And then suddenly you might come across in a coffee shop or something like that, a, a woman who says to you, you know, my child's going to this school. They have this great curriculum. It's already been created. And you can move your child to that school. So there are those that want to manifest education system that is full of stress. Because they think it's the best for their child to be brainwashed every day and force fed information that is of no value to them. We'll give you an example. Little boy, little girl sitting in a classroom. Let's say they're seven or eight years of age. And they're starting to learn about different things. They may be learning about people in history. Maybe they're nine. They're starting to learn about history. They're learning about the great wars, the aeroplanes, the soldiers, the machines. What does that trigger in the DNA of the little boy? It'll trigger a number of things. It will trigger, trigger the memory of war in the DNA. But it'll also trigger aggression, fear, anxiety, all sorts of things. What will it trigger in the little girl? A number of things. One is women were on their own. They weren't involved in it. So where's my voice? Where's my role in the community? Where do I fit in? Where's my empowerment in this situation? So here we have the great divide between male and female already starts very young and imprinting children with war and a separation of male and female is probably not a good idea. Now they may want to learn about it when they get older but when they're really young and very imprintable it's better to educate them into more equal environment. So let's just Leave that at that. So you might find a school that suddenly you've been thinking about that. You've been feeling it in your heart, what it would feel like to take your children. Now it's a big possibility you can do that. 
And then you might go to the school and you might say, oh, gee, that's a bit expensive. I don't think I can afford that. We would say to you, don't even think along those lines. Sit and feel what it's like to have your child in there and the money will come. And do not put a category on it. This is a very big thing that we see a lot with people who wish to manifest and they say they're living in their heart, but they've got all you know, 25,000 requirements. It has to be this way, this way, this way. And if it's not this way, then I don't want it. And if it comes in that color, I don't want it at all. And how dare God disappoint me because, you know, I'm in service to God and I'm doing all these things, but this isn't happening. So don't put conditions on it and don't barter with God because actually God doesn't barter. And neither does spirit. You know, neither do your guides. We, we don't barter with you. We guide you, but we don't barter with you. What you're actually doing is bartering with yourself and wondering whether you are worthy enough or good enough to bring that into your life. It's not about God and it's not about your guides. It's about you. So you might go through that. You might just sit there and say, okay, I can see, I can feel my children in there. I feel myself picking them up from that school. Maybe in the new term or when the year starts the next year. An aunt or a parent or something hears about it and offers to pay for it. Maybe there's a scholarship program. Maybe you win the money. Maybe you get a job that earns you this extra money so you can pay. There's many ways that it can come to you. Just be open to receiving it through your feelings because your feelings are the glue that bring it to you. So, being in the fifth is being in the present moment. It doesn't mean that you don't uh, understand the future or the past and you completely let go of it, but it means that most of you is in the present moment. It doesn't mean which a lot of people use as an excuse. Oh, I'm an hour late to meet you. Oh, I was just being in the present moment. Well, that's quite stupid. I was being in the present moment, so I'll come when I feel like it. If you make an appointment with someone, honour it. It's as simple as that. So we're not using being in the present moment or, or pretending to live in 5D as an excuse to treat people badly or shabbily or not honour your commitments. That's ridiculous. But we hear it. So uh, you'll find also that being in that present moment, being in 5D will ensure, that, like we've just demonstrated about the school, it will ensure that you will be one of those that hears about the positive things that are happening, what's available, what's going on. You'll be guided to it, led to it. So the concept of duality is something good happens, something bad happens. Suffering, joy, right? That goes away. And it's nothing about being monogamous one day after the other, etc. It's not like that at all. It's exciting. But it's not that you have to experience suffering to experience something good. You can experience good every day. But as we said earlier, you could still have an off day where your own biorhythms are not working. Then you may have the opportunity because you're in the present moment, to be in that present moment and not have to go outside and annoy everyone with your projection, you see? So it, it, it's not going to stop you from having an accident, falling off a chair or, you know, down a hill or something. It doesn't protect you from every single thing that could possibly happen to you. It's no guarantee that you're not going to have an accident, that you're not going to lose your job, that you're not... You know, it doesn't guarantee that at all. But what it does guarantee that the solution will come if you stay in your heart. 
So in other words, if you have the accident, you'll find the best doctor, you'll find the best healer, everything will come to you that you need to have a speedy and full recovery. If you lose your job, better one will come. You see, it's like this. It's not that you have to fall into a heap. Oh my goodness, nobody loves me. The world hates me. I'm now in despair. No. Say, so, okay, it's time for me to leave that. Now it's time for me to create something new. So this is how 5D operates compared to 4D. 4D is backwards and forwards, up and down, all around. 5D is continuous creation. So if you're having an off day, you stop. You're not really creating that day. You're just sitting in that energy. Well, that's not entirely true. You are creating, but maybe you're creating healing that day. Maybe you're creating silence that day. Maybe you're creating the opportunity to go within that day. So it's very exciting times regardless of what is happening in the world. Regardless of what is happening. Now the other thing we wanted to discuss is that and we said on the previous one, which, which is why we want to repeat it, because some people just heard in their mind, kept going over and over the negative, I need to get prepared. We said that to you to get prepared. Right? We said there will be a remedy to vaccine injury. There will be a remedy to toxic chemicals being placed in the body. Those who have EMF shock in their body, who... Uh, you know, have been very ill. They've had autoimmune diseases, these sorts of things that have happened because they haven't been able to function in a toxic world simply because in, in a lot of ways, it's not necessarily a weakness in the body. It, it, it's sometimes something to do with the soul and where they come from because the soul has to be also resilient and compatible and some souls are not necessarily compatible to a toxic earth, right? Or a toxic body. They're just not compatible to it. So they get sick, they've got to hide away. So a lot of cures are coming for these sort of illnesses that will revitalize the body and bring people back into balance. And, and what you've seen in, in what you'd call childhood illnesses even children with allergies all vaccines create a reaction even if you think well my child is healthy no all vaccines in the current state that they're in create a reaction in the body they create inflammation they create disharmony so if your child doesn't appear to be having a reaction it's because they may be very strong as a soul and they may have very strong DNA constitution in their physical body and these two are in harmony. But maybe you've reduced their intelligence. Maybe you have reduced their ability to be resilient when they get older. So you don't know yet exactly what has happened to your child. And maybe your child isn't as connected to its soul as it could be. So uh, all vaccines, as they are at this moment, have a reaction. And this is going to be a major, a major healing for the whole world. If you look, okay, let's look at the amount of people who have depression and anxiety, particularly those under the age of 35, in their 20s, early 30s. It's huge. It has a lot to do with vaccines, a lot. But parents would say, well, there's no physical reaction. They don't have allergies. They're not, you know, uh, having bronchial problems. They're not having rashes. They're not having autoimmunes or cancer or what have you, epileptic fits, etc. But maybe they're having anxiety. Maybe they're having learning difficulties. Maybe they're having depression. 
So what we're saying is that the solution to that is coming. And how would it feel like to live in a world where illness only comes if you have an accident? So it's not illness like cancer, uh, hepatitis, uh, these sort of things will no longer exist. The only time you'll need to go to a hospital is if you have an accident. Obviously, they will still exist because people push their bodies. So how beautiful will that be? Amazing. It'll be really amazing. Yeah, that will happen in the next few years. And, and also, free energy will happen also. Lots of things will happen. It's miraculous what will come. So and this is because of the awakening that's happening within the human psyche. And also because the governments will start working with, we could say light beings, aliens that are in harmony, as you call them, we call them star seeds, that are in harmony with the universal laws of love and kindness and compassion and so the earth will become a member of a universal or intergalactic alliance and not in the way that some think because some think oh intergalactic oh we'll have you know spaceships coming in and out and taking over everything no they will still remain discreet for now they will remain discreet because they understand it's not necessarily their planet. So they will help just as earthlings will help their planets at some point with different things. You know, there are some planets within the universe that are lacking certain foods, uh, certain animals, uh, ecological systems etc and, and mother earth can lend itself to that your scientists can lend themselves to that so don't think that earth is just this uh you know small planet that has no currency to exchange with other planets that's entirely not true you have many things that you are of benefit, that will be of benefit to other planets that you can help with. And it's not just, you know, we, we know that some of you hear about the slave market the, the, from the humans going on. And yeah, that's happened, but that happens even on other planets. There are those that travel the universe that do steal beings from many different planets and utilize them as slaves. And this has been a huge problem in the universe. So that you will understand at a later date. But what you're going to discover, many of you, is connection with home. For some of you, that will be uh, interdimensional beings. And for some of you, it will be star seeds. And for some of you, it will be both. Because some of you have lived on many planets and many different existences for various different reasons. So you will find yourselves thinking, thinking in universal terms and not in planetary terms. And as you do that, the energies of the universe will connect with you more clearly. So there's a big upgrade going on at this moment. So what we're saying is focus on being in the present moment, focus on what would love do now, placing yourself in the heart. Understand nothing bad can happen to you. We're not saying ignore your responsibility as a 
human being, an earthling, we call you earthlings, as an earthling, your responsibility is to protect and defend those that you love, your planet, plants, animals. That's your responsibility. So if you sign a petition, if you stand in the street, if you voice your no, that's normal. Some of you will be guided to do that. Some of you will be guided to do it in different ways. But if you think that being in 5D means that you're separate from the rest of the planet and it will not affect you, then you're not in 5D. Because in 5D and unity consciousness, you understand as long as there are people on the planet starving, being abused, it will affect you because you are one with everything. So it will affect you. You will feel it. And for some of you, you're feeling it quite strongly already. So that goes back to healing on behalf of the planet. Healing on behalf of your family karma. And that's what some of you have done. So we're not saying that you won't live a beautiful life. Of course you will. But, you, you know, let's put it this way. If you're in 5D and you're living a beautiful life, you're not going to sit back and say, oh, look at those idiots. They can't even get their head straight and, and to live in their heart so that they're not starving over there across the road. Now, of course, if you move into 5D, then your compassion and your understanding is, what can I do? What can I do? If you're in a financially affluent situation, you may give money. If you are uh, in a situation where you can create something that will help those people, then you'll create it, like clean water, etc. If you're in a situation where you can educate those people, then you'll do that. But it's not that you're going to move into 5D and suddenly your world is beautiful and the rest of the world is horrible. Yeah. You will say, what can I do to bring it all into balance? You will want everyone to feel the way that you do. Now the difference will be when you're in 4D and you're doing that, you're constantly really feeling the pain of everyone. And it's draining, it's exhausting. When you're in 5D, you don't need to go in the pain. You're an observer. You understand that you've already been there. You don't need to revisit it. But you know what's needed. It's, if you broke your leg and you mended it completely, beautifully, and then a friend of yours breaks their leg, you're going to give them the advice that they need in order to heal that leg in the same way that you did. But you won't feel their pain. Because it's no longer in you to feel. But you'll have compassion and understanding for them. That's what we mean by that. So, okay, let's go on to the next subject and then we'll finish. So the 6th of the 6th, the 6th of June, is an eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse. Lunar, what is that? Emotions. So what's happening right now? Emotions are becoming more and more heightened, aren't they? More and more heightened. What happens when emotions become heightened? That's to do with water. So rain, storms, floods, things like this. When you think about what's happening, the emotions that people are feeling and often suppressing when they're out in public, but those emotions create an energetic grid on the earth, an imprint. And that imprint has to be released. So if there's anything you would like to do around your own emotions, clearing out old emotions, becoming emotionally aware of where you may be 
hindering yourself, where you may be triggered, where you may be in reaction, then now's a good time to look at it and release it. Now's a very good time to be aware of how your emotions impact. So when you create a new dimension, when you, not a create a new dimension, but when you start to ground a new dimension on the planet, it has energy fields within it. So third dimension has a physical reality, an emotional reality, a mental reality, and an energetic reality, right? So does the fourth, so does the fifth. And what you're doing is the mass consciousness understands what it wants and what it doesn't want in its mind. So people are saying to themselves, well, you know, I, I, I don't want to be poor anymore. I don't want to starve anymore. I want this, I want that. Or some people are saying, that's not wrong. I don't want that anymore. I'm clearing that out of my mind. So people are becoming more aware of what their mind has been filled with. So some are turning away from the news. Some are turning away from reading certain things. Some are turning away because they're understanding that their mind gets influenced by the outside world and they don't wish to be influenced by it anymore. And then the next stage is, of course, the emotional. And that's what's playing out on the planet over the next 18 months. It's the emotional plane of existence. So during, before the eclipse happening now, during the eclipse and after the eclipse, there'll be a crescendo of emotions and water. And, and so we're, we're simply suggesting that you look at the landscape of that within yourself. And when you feel yourself being triggered, acknowledge that you're being triggered and ask again, what would love do now? What would love do to myself, for myself? What would it do for the people around me? What would it do for the planet? If that's impossible because you are so emotional, remove yourself from people, scream. You know, you can scream at God because God's used to that. And not only that, God will not retaliate. God is a force, of course, but it won't retaliate if it understands that you are in the process of release, not creation. You see, intelligence, universal intelligence understands the difference between release and creation. So when you're screaming, I want that person to die, live in hell, rotten hell, well, that's in a moment of creation sometimes, isn't it? Because there's, a, there's an energy behind it of what you want. But when you're screaming, I hate my life. Why am I feeling like this? When is it going to be my turn? You know, the universe understands its release. It's your pain. If you went up to a tree and you kicked the tree and you punched the tree and you released into the tree, the tree understands. It's the same as a parent with a child when a child is frustrated and when it's really young and it can't put the round peg in the square hole. It's trying really hard to do it with its toys and it can't and it screams and throws its body on the ground crying. The parent understands, ah, it's frustrated, it's having a release. Because often children do that when they're going through a bit of a growth spurt and their mind and their body are not congruent as yet. So they're thinking about what they want to do, but their, their body hasn't learned how to do it yet. You know, when they're crawling, when they're walking, when they're talking, etc. It's the same when you learn a language. You can think in your mind what you want to say, but actually saying it's different. So the child throws a tantrum. Parents understand it. Most parents would not chastise the child. They would not uh, retaliate against the child. They would understand, oh, it's frustrated. It's just having a release. And that's what the universe does for you. So if you find yourself getting over-emotional, go and have a release. Do it. Don't hold back. Do it. And you might need to warn the people around you. I'm going in there to have a release. 
don't come in. Right? You might go in there and scream and cry and you don't want anyone to touch you or to talk you out of it. You just need to release it. And that release may not even be yours. It could be a build-up of everybody else's. See, unity consciousness means that you're all interconnect interconnected. You are interconnected in yourself. You're interconnected with the universe. But you're also interconnected with everything on planet Earth. And sometimes you release on behalf of others. Sometimes you release on behalf of Earth. Sometimes that's what you've chosen to do. So be kind to yourself when you're in release. Understand what it is. And know, okay, what comes after emotional, physical, so when you've had the release, there'll be a physical response in a positive way because it's release. When you let go of something, it's replaced with something. When it's retaliation, there's not a release. So no, the more you release, the more you open to receive. So, beautiful things are coming. You're moving into a time of great peace within. Doesn't mean the world's gonna be at peace, but you need to be at peace. And that peace, many of you feel it. You, you, you see what's going on, but you feel calm inside. Say, mm, I feel it will be all right because you know it will be all right. It's playing out at the moment. And opportunities will come to you if you're in your heart to keep you safe, to keep you protected to provide for you, to contain you within what you would call the second earth, you know, the 5D. It doesn't mean you forget about the first earth. So when you're in there, you're, you're working towards making that reality for everyone. And as we said, there are many different ways in which you'll do it. And you can be inspired for that. And maybe sitting still is the way that you do it by anchoring the energy of love, light, truth, compassion and understanding. Perhaps that's the way. But the worst places that will be hit by different things will be places where the balance of male and female is not present at all. So where you've got too much male energy, it's aggressive, competitive. Controlling. And when you have male energy that is dominating the feminine and not allowing the feminine to be present, then you have a very big imbalance. Look at all the countries that are very poor. It's because they don't allow the feminine to be present. They don't honor the, fe the feminine at all. What does the feminine represent? Fertility. Creation. Creation. Not creativity. Creation. Fertility. Creation. So why are those countries poor? Because they are not allowing the creative, fertile energy that's on their land to be present. It's very simple. So it's not about the feminine becoming stronger than the masculine, which is what, let's say, the darkness is wanted to do, to provoke. 
So again, it's out of balance. It's not about that. It's about understanding your roles, understanding your strengths and your weaknesses, understanding your gifts and your empowerment and your worth as that gender. So on that note, we will leave you in our love and our light and our truth and our blessings. And we thank you so much for allowing us to share in your energies and supply you with a little bit of good news. Goodbye.